Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Causation, Level 6, Causation and Correlation. We're going to show our thinking on this system board in just a second. Uh, in this video, we're going to really be talking about relationships and identifying within a specific system, are the relationships going to be correlational or causational? And so a famous example is if we look in uh, the summer, we see increases in both ice cream sales and drownings, but it's not like ice cream sales are causing drownings. So we're going to see are those just correlations caused by warmer weather? Is it causal relationships? Or a lot of the time we'll find that relationships are going to be just coincidence, two things that just happen at the same time. The object that represents causation is going to be the green arrow because it always leads from the cause to the effect. Um, in our modeling, if we think something's correlated, we'll just draw an arrow in both directions, and then if it's coincidence, there's going to be no arrow at all. After watching this video, you should be able to identify different relationships in something like uh, interaction between these um, blocks. I'll show you a video of that at the end. Or in a study like nearsightedness and um, youngsters being in rooms with nightlights. But I'm going to start by showing you my thinking around this four gear machine. So let me set that up. So as always, the first thing we should do is define the system. So we're going to be looking at relationships in a four gear machine. Uh, we should play with it. So you can see as I move the gray gear, you can see that's causing the other gears to move. So let's model the system. So I always put the events that I see going on. So we've got the gray gear rotating. So when that gray gear rotates, uh, what I would put forward is all the others are moving. And so I don't see a lot of coincidence going on. I do see a lot of uh, correlation and, and probably some causation as well. So let me kind of put forward some arrows. So to show you what I'm thinking, so since nothing starts moving until I move the gray gear, I think the gray gear rotating causes all the other gears to move. It causes the orange gear to rotate, which causes the blue gear to rotate. But what's interesting about this setup is since the orange gear is touching both the, the yellow and the blue gear, but um, these aren't touching each other, I call this a correlation because we could say that both the movement of the yellow and the movement of the blue are caused by the orange, but blue is not causing yellow and yellow is not causing blue. And so you can see on here that I'm, I'm showing a correlation there, but then a lot of causation everywhere else. So the first thing you should always do is identify what you think are the relationships. Um, and then the next thing you have to do is experiment. We have to do some experimentation and so I cannot remove the gray or the blue gear, but I can remove the yellow gear. So if I remove the yellow gear, then let's see what happens. So that makes sense. So when I'm removing the yellow gear, um, the gray gear can't cause it to move because it's not there and the orange gear can't cause it to move. And so I haven't learned anything new. Let's remove the orange gear though. And let's see what happens there. Okay, so this is really interesting. So without the orange gear, I still get the blue gear moving. And so let me show you my thinking, and I'm gonna do this one in red. So I'm gonna add this new thing called a, a mystery mechanism. And so I would say the gray gear is causing the mystery mechanism to do something that might be causing the blue gear to rotate. Are any of my other relationships kind of in danger? I would say, well, at this point, I, I know that the gray gear causes the orange gear to move, so I think this is okay, but is the orange gear really causing the blue gear to move? I think I could put a question mark there. I'm not sure. And are these correlated? You saw here that by removing this one, there is no correlation there. So that might put this one kind of, um, in jeopardy as well. 
So I could do a lot more experiments, obviously. I could turn this over, I could dig into it more, and I'm gonna get more relationships going on in here. But the key thing is, number one, identify what are all the relationships, do some kind of an experiment, and then readjust those. Uh, if you're not sure exactly what's going on, put question marks and those lead to further uh, experiments. So let me set up the next one that we'll do together. Okay, for the next one, we're gonna look at this XKCD comic. So let me define the system. So the system is going to be this XKCD comic on cell phones and cancer. If I were to read it to you at the beginning, another huge study found there's no evidence that cell phones cause cancer. What was the World Health Organization thinking? Person in the black hat says, I think they got it backwards, huh? We'll take a look. And then there's the data right here where you see an increase in total cancer incidence this is from 1970 to 2010. And then an increase in cell phone users. Uh, you're not, there are so many problems with that, he says. And then just to be safe until I see more data, I'm going to assume that cancer causes cell phones. And so that's the joke. Uh, so what I would encourage you to do is take a second, draw out the thinking from the comic of what are they uh, making claims about what's causing what. And then I've got some video, some uh, data below. So I got a bunch of studies and links to information below. So you could go through just like an experiment and then redo your thinking. Okay, the first thing I would do is I would define what, what is happening and what are all the claims being made about the relationships. Okay, if we put these out um, in, the, in the comic, the World Health Organization, according to the comic, is saying that cell phone use is causing an increase in the total cancer incidence. So we could say this is the World Health Organization. Um, we could say that the person without a hat is just saying that there's either a correlation between the two or there is just a coincidence going on. And then the person in the black hat is saying that <laughs> this is where it's a joke. So Black Hat is saying that the um, total cancer incidence is causing cell phone use. So the first thing you should do is put forward what do you think uh, is, is uh, represented in the system. And so we've got these two events. There's a correlation maybe here, a causation here, and then a reverse causation here. But then the next thing to do is look at some data. So if you looked at some of the data below, first thing we see is there is a exponential increase in the amount of wireless subscribers. So we could put that here, that's important data. Um, what else do we see? We see interesting stuff with cancer rates. So um, big increases in 1990, which almost looks like this exponential growth, is mostly found in males. And a lot of that has to do with prostate cancer and new ways of sensing uh, cancer that is present. Um, we could also look at this study on U.S. cell uh, subscribers and brain cancer incidents, and we find there's not really any correlation there. And then we could see right here there's a big Danish study, and then this is the World Health Organization study. And even the World Health Organization said just within a small group of people that we could look at a different effect. So they found that increased, large amounts of increase in cell phone use could cause increases in one form of brain cancer. Um, but a lot of the studies are not definitive. This is clearly not true. So we could say that any kind of change in here just happens to be um, coincidence or it could be some kind of a causation. And so we would have to modify this as well. So almost all the data puts this in jeopardy. And so the nice thing about um, doing this is put together your thinking first using one color and then go back over and kind of change it based on the evidence that we collect. Um, now that we've done that together, I would encourage you to try one of the videos down below. I've got one that's on these mystery blocks that are interacting with each other. And then you could actually apply it in this uh, famous study. What you're trying to do is just identify all the relationships, which of those are correlational, causal, and coincidence. So that's thinking in causation uh, level six, and I hope that was helpful.